Welcome to the BVTV Network, coming to you from the UK studios of BizVision. I'm your host, Malcolm Gallagher. Now, this is episode two in the Progress Leadership Trilogy with the author of this book, Dean Lindsay. Hello again, Dean. Hello. I am honored to be back with you. Part two. Yeah. And we've just been chatting. You're in Dallas, Texas. Yeah. I am good, sir. Yes, I am. Uh, yeah, yeah. Land of land of the uh, the big uh, the big sort of um, everything. Padded, big sh- everything. padded, sh- padded, sh- padded, sh- padded <laughs> shoulder, padded shoulder, padded shoulder stuff. Yes, but it? no, this is these are my real shoulders, man. This yeah. is me. I was, uh, yeah. yeah, no, no, I don't uh, need none uh, of that. Oh well, tell Sue <laughs> Allen I'm. Tell Sue Ellen I'm still in love with her. Uh, Dean, your book, and your book, and it's a great book, I, it really is, shows how to enhance opportunities through what you call the six P's of progress. Now, can you briefly explain them and why it's important to get the correct mixture of them? Absolutely, absolutely. So um, I knew that there was, um, you know, as you take a deep dive into, guess, motivation or goals, um, I started studying everything I could around those concepts, and I got down to the six P's of progress. And basically what I'm saying is that everything we do as humans, everything we do consciously or subconsciously, we do because we believe the perceived consequences of those actions will be us feeling the the right unique mixture to us of pleasure, peace of mind, profit, prestige, pain avoidance, and power, the six mm. P's of progress. Pleasure, peace of mind, profit, prestige, pain, avoidance, and power. Well, that works on us, and it also works on other or works for other people. You can say it works on other people or works for other people. It's consciously or subconsciously. When you take an action, you're doing it to feel some unique mixture of those six P's, i.e., progress. That's what progress really. Is. Mm. That's what progress really is. You feeling some unique mixture, and so why it's important as a leader or a sales executive or a customer service rep to really understand those six P's is because if we want customer loyalty, if we want somebody to sign on the dotted line, if we want them to pay their bills, if we want them to uh, follow your objectives or recommendations, they need to feel that it's going to be progress for them, feel some unique mixture of those six P's of progress. Well, in an early, you know, you look at those and you go, wait a second, it's their job. It's, you know, so, so then they're doing it because of pain avoidance, right? That's one of the six P's. Yeah. The pain avoidance parenting and pain avoidance leadership are definitely, um, you know, methods of leadership. But I consider both of those very lazy areas of leadership because there's so many other ways to propel people into positive action, especially prestige and peace of mind and, you know, uh, pleasure, you know, there's, so that's what the six P's are. And and uh, that's what I delve into in the middle part of the book. Yeah. Can, can I ask then, uh, throwing in a, another P there, uh, is there a way of prioritizing? Should you be prioritizing those P's? That is a great question. You know, a lot of people try to tell me what, the, ask me what the order is or which one is most important. But you're asking about prioritizing them. I don't know if you should prioritize them as much as I do know that pain avoidance is one that people definitely, if they are feeling pain, they want to avoid pain. But you don't know they are feeling pain unless you ask questions. So the main thing that I tried to share in that is that it's really good to get to know people. Because the more you get to know them, then you understand what, you know, what, what they're, what they're, you know, looking to, you know, what, what, what pushes their buttons in those, those ways. But we do that, you know, in big ways and small ways all the time. I mean, that, you know, it's good to smile, right, Malcolm? I mean, it's, you know, it's not just over here. Everybody's supposed to smile, right? Well, that's one of the tips people say. It's good to smile. Well, why is it good to smile? Because when you smile, you're giving a little bit of pleasure to that person. You're offering yeah. them a little bit of pleasure. And yeah. they smile back. Now, I'm not saying that's all you need to do. You smile and you got it. But it's it, that's why in, and in a lot of my talks, I do a little seesaw. That if people motive for action, motivation, if people have enough motive, if they get enough of those six P's, they'll do the action. If they don't get enough of those six P's, they they won't. Or another thing important to realize is that you're trying to get them to do something different than what they were already planning to do. So they're not coming from zero. They already have some kind of progress and those six P's of progress connected to what they were planning to do anyway. You have to, to give them more reasons to do something different than what they were already planning to do. 
I think that's really, really important anyways. And if you don't get the progress, you get the other P, don't you? Which is panic. <laughs> which is a form of, uh, of pain avoidance. And which is also great, sir, is that the more you anticipate the panic, the more you actually go, man, if I don't hustle now, I'm going to feel panic of not being able to pay my bills or not growing like I'm mm. part two or not meeting payroll, which is then going to encourage you to do something now to help you avoid the pain uh, in the future. But that's, yeah. that's a lot of what wisdom is, is, is anticipating, you know, the feelings you're going to feel down the road. Yeah. yeah. You know, again, what I like about the book is that, um, is the dip in and dip out opportunity. You know, some people say, oh, you've got to read my book from beginning to end, you know, uh, sit down and uh, no, you're, you know, you're, you've got a book whereby you can dip in, reflect, dip in again, reflect, you know, and, and you're growing all the time as you deepen in. And I love, I love the, 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 um, the huge amount of quotations you've got in, in in here. There's some brilliant ones, but what is really fascinating is that um, is is how some of them, like Plato and Aristotle and everything, are so relevant to today, aren't they? Great, you know, it was so fun, Malcolm. Trying to find you know quotes. I mean, I dig, I dig so deep in, and you know, and then trying to, and I I have two or three options for every place there's a quote in there. I'd have different ones, but I was trying to do that, sir. I mean, that's the, there's also Pat Benatar and uh cheryl crow and you know some yeah. uh, i think uh, i think jim morrison made it into the book i mean so there's a lot of variety in that book you know and some some justices and some presidents yeah and sure I, I, thought the, I thought the einstein comment was so relevant to progress where he says you know in riding a bicycle if you don't keep moving forward <laughs> and there is progress isn't it yes that's that, yep it all plays and so that in the quotes what i tried to do is and i'm sure you saw there I'm making, I'm putting the quote where I'm already made some form of the relevant point before it, or I'm about yeah. to make a, a point related to it afterwards, because I really was trying to say that I'm not making all this stuff up. I mean, I'm, it's all kind of a fresh spin on some very timeless stuff. I'm just yeah. kind of spinning it in a little fun, cool way that, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully will get, 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 get people. I, I mean, I hope they'll go back and read the biography of some of the people I quoted, you know, yeah, especially yeah, from, yeah. especially from. I, I, I just want to finally say in episode two that that really what I like about you doing those quotes is yes, you've given it, it's an example. It it reinforces the the work there, but I felt and it's something I've learned from your book that doing that actually made me learn or, or retain, should we say, the the concept that you were talking about a lot a lot easier. Um, it was that nice bit of balance there. Right. OK. Thanks, Dean. Now, let's give viewers and listeners details of your URL, your website address, which obviously, viewers, you can see on the screen behind me. But for listeners, let me spell it out. It's all the W's, all the W's. Dean, D-E-A-N, D-E-A-N, Lindsay, L-I-N-D-S-A-Y, DeanLindsay.com. Dean's book, this one that we've been talking about, is called Progress Leadership say no to change management, and it's published by World Gumbo Publishing. Now, I'm loving hearing about Dean's concept, and I think it's so spot on for today's change challenges. To me, it puts people first, not the change. Now, in episode three, one of my typical, though, doubting Malcolm questions, how does Dean suggest that progress leadership becomes embedded in the culture of a business and not be seen as a passing fad? So are you up for that, Dean? I'm up for it, sir. 